How you doing? I'm Matt. Today I'm going to show you how to make cutting boards the easy way. These are all four made from cutting board kits. And what that means is they come pre-cut, pre-milled, so you don't have to have planers, jointers, that sort of thing to actually make a beautiful cutting board like this. Working the Grain has four kits available at the time of this filming for you to choose from. Now these kits come in a variety of species of hardwoods depending on what color combination you want and how you want the look to come out at the end. We're gonna make a very simple clamping jig to ensure that your cutting boards come out flat. I saw this on a Russian YouTuber's channel. I'll put a link to his channel down below. We're gonna use two inch PVC pipe to create our own clamping jig that keeps these boards flat. And that's what you want so they don't have to have a planer later to re-flatten them or flatten them with some type of router jig. We're gonna make this first. Yeah. This is two inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. You can buy it at any home store, hardware stores, carry PVC pipe, anything like that. I had them cut this in six foot lengths and I'm gonna cut it in half. PVC makes a mess when you cut it. So you'll cut four pieces of two for about three inches long. Then you'll take your PVC pipe, lay them on top, pre-drill and screw those into the PVC. Any of these exotic woods, the bloodwood, purple heart, Winch, Paduk, Mora, you want to wipe those down with acetone before you glue them up because they have some natural oils in the wood that are actually on the surface. This will take those oils away. If you don't, you risk the cutting board separating later because those oils won't allow the glue to stick. Now I like this pattern that it's in, so I'm going to leave it. However, if you wanted to rearrange this pattern anyway, you could do that right now. Now these come pre-cut and milled. They're sanded. You don't have to do any of that. Everything is ready to go. It takes out a whole lot of work on your part. You're not having to cut these, plane them, joint them, and get those smooth surfaces to glue to. All you need to do with the exotics is wipe it with acetone, let that dry, and put glue on it. And this stuff dries really quick. The proof is in the pudding right there. It's taking those oils out. See that color coming out of there? It's because of those oils. The wall doesn't need it, but it ain't gonna hurt it either. See how fast it's drying? Once you let that acetone dry for about five minutes, go ahead and put a liberal amount of glue on there. Don't be afraid to squeeze the glue on there. Spread it out, make sure it's spread equally and the whole board is covered. Once all pieces have glue, you're gonna start stacking them back together. Make sure you line up one end so you minimize the waste. Then I put the clamp in the middle to start with. Ensure that the bottom of your board is flat against that PVC. You may have to take a little mallet and make those adjustments. Once it's flat, you can start putting the other clamps on. I recommend putting on as many as you can. I wind up putting five per board. You should see glue dripping out. Now, some people don't wipe and some people do wipe the glue up. I chose to wipe it up with a wet rag. Set that one to the side if you have more than one to make. And then we can clean off those pipes with just the wet rag. Glue comes right off. Now we're gonna do the other board the exact same way. We're gonna put that glue on there and then clamp it up tight. One thing you wanna watch for when you're clamping this stuff a lot of times you'll see these boards start trying to, because that glue is so slippery, they'll try to start moving on you when you first start tightening it down. So what I like to do on any glue up is to snug it up first on one, and then we'll move to the next one. And you just wanna ensure that these stay down, because if they don't, then you'll wind up having to create yourself a little more work later. Not that it can't be fixed if you don't catch it, but it just if you don't have planers and jointers, this will just make it easier when you start sanding everything. Another good idea, a friend of mine tells me that if you leave your clamps up off your workpiece just a little bit, that'll make that glue clean up easier if you choose to wipe that down. Some woodworkers don't wipe it, some do. I think it's a lot of personal preference. I'm just checking to make sure all of my boards are touching the PVC so that we don't wind up with some wampa jawed board. We want it to sit flat when you're done. If you have F-style clamps like this, which a lot of people have, this is what I started with and I used for several years, was the only thing I had was F-style. This is a Harbor Freight brand. I've got some Irwin brand. These work well, they're good clamps. The only thing is, you know that this little piece right here 
and this piece here will damage the edge of your boards. So what you, but when you're clamping with these style clamps, take a scrap piece. It doesn't have to be walnut. It can be pine or whatever you've got, spruce. Lay that on the edge on each side. And when you start applying the pressure, that way any indentions or damage will come to this piece and not these pieces and you'll still get the clamping pressure. Make sure there's no glue on the outside when you use this piece or it will become part of the cutting board. Miss 731 got in on the action and she started to put the glue on but it hurt her uh, surgically repaired arm. So I wound up squeezing the glue for her while she spread it out. Once we got it on there, she stacked them all together and started applying clamps. This board's actually hers she's gonna take to her classroom. Now you'll notice I use calls on this one. That's just plywood, cut it about two inches wide and then had some painter's tape on the bottom and then clamped two clamps on each side. What I did was made two with calls and two without calls. I noticed the two with calls are much flatter and much easier. I will use calls from now on. So you can see that that board is flat. And by flat, I mean the bottom edge all the way across, there's no wobble there. So you're not gonna have to worry about trying to get it to sit flat once you're done. Now all we have to do is sand this, or if you have a planer, you can run it through the planer. If you don't, that's why the purpose of this video is those that don't have planers or jointers, you're gonna sand this, and I would start with a high grit or a low grit, like 60 grit, 80 grit, sand that, and then you'll start stepping up 80, uh, 120, all the way to 220. I wouldn't go higher than 220 on something like this. You'll do that on both sides. That's gonna get rid of that glue. It's gonna make everything nice and smooth. Now what you may notice is a little bit of a difference in the heights of these. You, that's what you're gonna be sanding down to get it flat. So make sure that you're holding your sander flat and going back and forth until they're all even if you don't have a planer. Of course, if you have a planer, it's much easier to run that thing through there and let it take everything down to a smooth, flat alignment. But if you don't, we can do the same thing with a sander. It's just gonna take longer. I highly recommend some bench cookies. These things are so Super awesome. They got this rubber grippy stuff on there, picks it up off the workbench and it keeps it from moving around while you sand. If you sand your board, be prepared to sand for a long time. If you have a planer, this process is so much easier because you ain't got to sand for hours on end. Now this one's not too bad as far as the levels go on each board. It's actually really close. So actually this one glued up a little better than the other one. What I'm going to do is run this through the planer sled and I noticed that right here in, in what I call a planer sled, this is just a piece of three quarter inch plywood with a board screwed onto the end to keep it from pushing off when it goes through the planer. So I noticed that right here, there's just a tiny bit of a gap. I mean, I just got a little shim and you just stick them on there until you find one that's, it doesn't lift it up, but it's snug. And what that'll do is keep the planer from actually pushing that down. We'll get a one flat side, we'll take it off of the planer sled and run it through flat side down, it'll flatten the other side and you'll have two flat sides. This is exaggerated, but we'll pretend that that it, it looks like this when you've got it on there, you know, even if it's just a little bit. Same principle is gonna apply. If it's rocking, you're gonna shim this up until it doesn't rock anymore. You're touching two opposite corners and they don't move. And then you'll just shim. Once you've got that shim, you can run it through the planer and it'll make it flat. So you may notice a couple of knot holes or even little splits or anything in your wood. You can easily repair those with CA glue. I use Starbond, I use clear here. If I was on walnut or a darker color, I would use brown or even black. Very easy to use. Put it in there, spray that accelerator on there. That makes it dry within about 30 seconds. Then you take your sander and sand it back flat and it fills those holes. They're sealed and they won't split again. I'll put a link in the description below to the Starbond if you're interested. Now, if you don't have a table saw, the best way to, that I've found to square up things is just use your circular saw and a speed square. Now you see me put down some painter's tape to prevent any tear out from the blade of the circular saw. Remove the tape, nice. I think you can see right here where I didn't get a good clamp on there and that is actually got a gap in there. I don't wanna leave that in my cutting board so I'm gonna cut that off. So we're gonna step it back. We're gonna finish out the edges and then pop the grain and we'll be ready for oil. 
On the other three boards, I used to use my crosscut sled and the table saw to cut those square. I've got a video on how to build this crosscut sled. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. Now for the edges, if you don't have a router, you can actually just use your sander and just kind of round those edges over. You need to ensure that you have a very good bit. This is a white side 45 degree bit. It's very sharp and it works very well. I tried chamfering the corners on this board. I didn't really like how that come out, so I didn't do it on the other three. But for the edges, top and bottom, I do like it. Now here's an example of a roundover versus a chamfer. Some people prefer the roundover. I preferred the chamfer, but I wanted you to see the options of what it looked like rounded over. So I don't have a spray bottle, so I just use a damp rag, squeeze the water on there, and then wipe the board, and that actually pops what they call pops the grain. And you can actually feel it now that's got little prickly wood grainy things like hairs sticking out of it and you're going to let that dry and then we're going to sand that again to 220 right before we oil it that way with the first time your customer or yourself or the person you've given this as a gift washes the board it doesn't feel like this it's already happened so that's a very important step it's the moment we've all been waiting for so i got some food grade mineral oil off of amazon I'll drop a link in the description below. I bought this box at Walmart. You can get these at any box store or even on Amazon. If I find one on Amazon, I'll drop a link in the description. Uh, mainly I wanted one big enough that it would hold the cutting boards. I'm gonna start with this one because it's by far my favorite and Miss 731's favorite. Now there's a lot of people who say you don't need to do this, that they just wipe on the oil. The, I think that the board needs to soak it up. Some say that this will be dripping oil in two weeks. That's a nonsense. Uh, once you get it out of here, we're gonna set it up here, it'll drip dry. After a couple of hours, it's fine. A lot of people let these soak overnight and some people let them soak for a couple of hours. So I let my board soak about two hours each, and then I pull them out and lay them on the same PVC we use to glue up. This lets them drip dry. I put two boards in the bath while two come out. After I get them out, I stand them up vertically so that they can drip. So then I let them drip overnight after they all had their two hour baths. So a couple of things you can do to finish this board you can get a bottle of this Howard's Butcher Box conditioner. Yeah, they're almost the same thing. So this actually has mineral oil, carnauba, and beeswax in there. Uh, it's just a uh, more liquidy. This is actually a mix of beeswax and mineral oil, and both are food safe, and a lot of people use these on their boards. It's called board butter. You can actually buy some of this on our website if you want to check that out, 731woodworks.com slash store. It's waxy, as you can see. Get you a clean rag and buff it on. This will just help protect it, and this is something you can use after you wash it a few times and you'll want to reapply this as needed. A lot of times if you're selling cutting boards or giving them as gifts, you, a good idea to give them a can of this too so that they can keep their board conditioned. And this will actually help bring out a little bit more of that color as well. You'll just lay a coat of that down, take a dry side of the rag, and just buff it off. Some people actually prefer the Howard's Butcher Box conditioner. You can pick this up anywhere. I'll have a link in the description below to this as well if you're interested. This stuff is, is really easy to use. Just give it a good shake. Everything gets good and mixed up. And then you're just gonna apply this very liberally on top. Use a clean rag and same thing. Just work it into the wood and then you'll buff it off with the clean side of the rag. So the directions actually recommend that you leave this setting on the board for about 20 minutes before you buff it off. After 20 minutes or so, you're just gonna come back and buff off any excess. Now out of these two products, I much prefer the board butter because this is actually pretty oily. It's, got, it's heavy in mineral oil, while this is more concentrated with the wax and you can actually buff the wax to a, a satin sheen and it's not greasy feeling. 
I'm so happy with how these turned out. They're absolutely fantastic. I think you should get one and try it yourself. I think you'll be surprised. Hey, if you like this type of video and you want some more beginner woodworking projects, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to those projects. If you click that box right there, it's another one of my favorite. You get big old virtual fist bump. And don't forget, you can get some board butter from our website, 731woodworks.com store. And if you buy anything on the website, it directly supports our channel.